Hi everybody, it's Jennifer McCreeth. Tuesday, September 13, 2022. And the big news today is the Boston Marathon is creating a new, separate category called non-binary. So you don't have to choose male or female. You can run the Boston Marathon as a non-binary entry. And there seems to be some reaction, positive and negative, uh, online. And I just want to say that this is not a brand new concept per se. 15 years ago, I was a marathon runner and I was looking to transition from male to female. And I recognized that there was going to be perhaps some questions about suitability for me to compete in certain categories. When is the right time for a male transitioning to female? to leave the male uh, classification in sports and move to the female classification. The uh, International Olympic Committee started looking at this in 2003 in anticipation of potentially having trans athletes uh, enter the Olympics. And fast forward to uh, 2008. I had uh, run five marathons as a male, pre-everything, I guess we will say, 2007, and I undertook a bulk of the transition during, I guess, what we'll call the winter off-season, including legally changing my name and starting hormone replacement therapy. I no longer wanted to be classified as a male. I felt that would be an indignity to me and as a trans person. Not because I'm trying to cheat anyone out of winning a race. That's definitely not what it was about, at least not for me. As great of a runner as I was, I was never going to be an elite level athlete competing for first place in these major events. And I approached marathons one by one and said, here's the deal. And most of them are like, yeah, you can we don't really care. Just put your name in there and we'll let you run. But then you get to something bigger like Boston where you have to qualify, then it becomes, well, it became a little bit of past the buck. Say, well, if, if, if your qualifying run was classified by someone else as female, we'll let you run as a female. Pretty simple. And again, there was never any threat that I would actually win the Boston Marathon. I just wanted to go there and participate and wave my trans flag and be seen and accepted and hopefully celebrated as a trans person who actually does plain, boring, regular, everyday things like running marathons, much like I feed the ducks and go to the bathroom. I'm a human being, right? So I, I made the transition, literally, on paper. There were a couple races in 2008 where I ran as unclassified. You will check the race results, you'll see Jennifer McCreeth ran the marathon, and there'll be no sex attached to my ranking. I did not compete as a male or a female, I was just there and I ran the marathon. And it's in the record books. And my non-alcoholic beer is exploding here. Hmm. Don't try this at home, folks. Gotta get some more of that hand cream going here. And again, there's there seems to be some renewed interest in trans sports. I guess to go back to the original story, the folks from 2003 that thought they might qualify for the Olympic teams did not actually qualify for the Olympics. Hence, there was no need to test the policy, but there was a policy created called the Stockholm Consensus that outlined exactly what type of criteria were needed. As far as the Olympic Committee were concerned, based on their scientists and their doctors, on what steps needed to take place to sufficiently demasculinize and feminize a trans body to the point that they would not have a competitive advantage. 
and they came up with some criteria that included full sex reassignment surgery, two years on hormones, cross-sex hormones, hormone levels uh, consistent with the so-called female norm range, whatever that may be, and that kind of guided a lot of other organizations. And at some point, well, let's not get ahead of myself. You may have heard of the Gay Games. They actually started out as the Gay Olympics, but they got sued or were threatened to be sued about using the word Olympics. So the Gay, gay Olympics quickly became the Gay Games. Then there was some drama at the board of directors that led to a split. And all of a sudden we had two organizations. We had the Gay Games and then we had the World Out Games. Well, it was uh, more so timing than anything else. I decided it was appropriate to outreach to this group and say, I, I don't just want to run the marathon, but I want to be distinguished and recognized as being a trans person. I don't want to, I don't want my legacy to be trans. I want my legacy to be female because I'm transitioning from male to female. The word non-binary was not on my radar, and when it did come on the radar, it, it was like, that's really not what I'm about here. I go by Jennifer, my pronouns are she and her, but I recognized, at least at that time, it would be unfair for me to compete in the female category because I had not undergone sufficient demasculinization as I had not been a full two years on the on the hormones or two full years post up. So they said, sure, come on over, we'll create this trans category for anyone. And uh, initially there were goals and plans to profile this, isn't this great? The World Out Games, we're accepting of trans people, we're not forcing them to label as male or female. We're not going through a list of standards. They're not here to win, they're just here to participate. I want a participation medal, okay? I don't have to be the fastest male or the fastest female. I just want to be known as the first trans person to say, Hi, I'm officially recognized by an international sports body as a trans athlete, and I am here, I am in shape, I am participating, and like I said, I'm holding that trans flag high for the world to see. I want to inspire other trans people. You don't have to uh, don't have to give up on your hopes and dreams just because you're trans or you're transitioning. You can still get out there and run marathons if that's what you want to do. Turned out, 13 people signed up for the trans category, but the other 12, for whatever reason, they wanted it kept secret. They did not want to be outed as trans and they did not want it outed that they had been in the trans category and I can understand and appreciate that. A lot of trans people, once they're out as trans, they lose their house, they lose their job, they lose their family, they lose just about everything and yeah, that pretty much happened to me. So yeah, I can understand why you might not want people to know that you're trans. But in the end, there was no spotlight, there was no celebration, it was just a, a quiet little here's your gold medal. Like, I don't need a gold medal, I just, I didn't come here to be declared the winner, I just came here to be seen and heard. In the end, it kind of flopped. Um, it's still something I'm proud of, but uh, it kind of faded away, and I guess at some point, we fast forward to more recently, I'm not even sure who started this movement, but uh, the NCAA, the United States National Collegiate Athletic Association. I believe it was them, it might not have been, but uh, trans people were saying the Stockholm consensus is too restrictive, you're requiring me to change my legal documents when certain countries don't even recognize sex surgeries, sex change surgeries, or some people like to call it gender confirmation surgery, whatever the lingo is. Certain countries said, uh-uh. And uh, so they're like, okay, maybe, maybe we need to revisit our policies. And then what about trans people who can't take hormones because, I don't know, they have diabetes or something that 
precludes them or makes it too much of a risk. What about trans people that don't want or need surgery? We've seen the ultimate other side of this story where we have Castor Semenya being told if you do not have surgery we won't accept you as a female because for for their opinions she has too much testosterone. I don't know what's going on there really. I think I kind of know. I think that has. I think it's an inter intersex type of scenario. And that's a whole other issue and category. Um, I've been complaining about trans people being pushed to the back of the line when it comes to minority groups seeking equality and, and rights and activism. Some non-binary folks will tell you that they are oppressed by the trans community. Some trans people like myself will say we are being oppressed by the non-binary community. Interestingly enough, as the NCAA loosened its policies to the point where anyone could perhaps identify, they could compete based on an identity rather than a medical type of transition. And as soon as somebody actually won an event, immediately all the trolls stood up and said that's not fair. The only reason this person won is because they were born male on and on and on and perception is reality when you have a, a perceived problem you have a crisis there was an Olympian that made the Olympics finally last year everyone's saying it's not fair this trans woman's gonna win it was weightlifting Laurel Hubbard New Zealand Proudia good effort um, everyone's like it's not fair that Laurel Hubbard is participating in the Olympics Laurel Hubbard is gonna win this event and it won't be fair well Laurel Hubbard did not win the event Laurel Hubbard finished ninth so there goes your theory that there's a, a guaranteed advantage. But we had a swimmer in the amateur ranks in the NCAA that won a, a race. And uh, that seemed to reopen the floodgates. And that led to Athena, F-I-N-A, I don't know what it stands for, something to do with swimming and water sports. Basically changed their policy, declaring pretty much any trans person disqualified unless they had transitioned at the age of 12 or younger, which never happens. You can't even transition until you're older. That's just the way things work. So now let's say the Boston Marathon gets decides they want to suck up the FINA. That would then disqualify me. So if I were to ever run the Boston Marathon again, yes, I have run it twice. Once as a male, once as a female. How many people can say they did that? I might become the first person to run it in three sex categories. Because if the FINA rules were to apply to Boston, I would be disqualified from running as a female because I transitioned after the age of 12. Regardless of this transition, they still say, no, we don't think it's right. More political than anything else. They don't have any proof. They say they have it, but they really don't. So. Okay, you got this third category, whatever the hell you want to call it, whether it's trans, whether it's non-binary, whether it's miscellaneous, whether it's other. I don't personally identify as non-binary in terms of sex. I kind of do in gender. I got a video out there talking about how I don't really have a gender. I have masculine traits, I have feminine traits, but that has absolutely nothing to do with what's between my legs. That's called sex, that's called transsexual. It's a word people are trying to erase. I very much want to keep it alive because it's a difference between sex and gender. Gender is between your ears. Sex is between your legs. I've been saying that for 15 years. And I'm not non-binary and I really would not want to register under that category. I don't feel it's an appropriate label for me. I'm not going to run as a male, and if they say I'm not uh, not eligible to run as a female, then guess what? Either you, either I become non-binary against my own will, or I don't participate. Bottom line, I think we should say good things about the Boston Marathon. They've worked with me. They've worked with others. It seems to come up every couple of years. Trans people running the Boston Marathon. Everyone acts like it's a brand new thing that's never happened before. Heck, I came out in 2008 and said I'm the first trans person to run a marathon in the world and other people are like, no, 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 no. 
here's the first out one. There are other trans people who have run marathons that just haven't told anyone. And I, that's fine. And uh, part of this is education and awareness, so it's telling the story. Um, does a non-binary category help me? No, not really. Um, if it helps others, great. I'm all about inclusion. I want everyone who wants to run the Boston Marathon to be able to run it. And this is an opportunity to open the door to some other people that might otherwise be uh, sent away. But we're still not there. I still don't see a problem with a, a trans category. Again, you don't have to give us equal prize money. I'm not looking to win a million dollars for being the first trans person to cross the finish line. I just want some recognition that we're out here and we're fighting for basic rights, human rights, health care, employment. And if I've got the talent to put together a program, a training program, that will enable me to run marathons, that means I must have something good to offer upstairs and this perceived out-of-date ideology that trans people are mentally ill, that's what we're still fighting, the stigma there. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. And uh, I'm going to monitor this situation. And uh, I haven't run a marathon in a long time. I probably won't run any more ever again because I'm old and my body's broken down and injured. But you just never know. And somebody has to act, be an activist for this. So we're going to say goodbye. Thanks for watching the video. It's time to watch the news, so we're going to sign off.